This is great music. I, for one, love it. I believe it's classic and at least almost 300 episodes deep and now an immovable object. I'll tell you why later. <laughs> oh, we know it's in all the porn commercials. Why are we using it, Because then? it's in the porn commercials. This is where uh, we advertise. This is terrible. This is how we get the views. So awkward. So <laughs> where do you awkward. think our ad budget goes? Uh, I don't know. All right. <laughs> all right. This episode is brought to you by our th- their partner, Dirty Bee. Dirty I'm Bee. sorry, Dirty Bee. I'm sorry that this is how we do this. <laughs> From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, real therapists. Yeah. Soon, real, real music. Porn. No. <laughs> you can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. That's Jim. That's Whitney. I'm Nick. It's time for some pod therapy. Yeah. Woo. What's the first question? All these are winners. All these are winners. Uh, come down for the Patreon today. It's a hoot nanny. <laughs> We went so deep on it, we started the show and then had to restart the show because yeah. we went so deep down the hole. Uh, Patreon.com slash therapy. <laughs> hear about our ad contest, which we are now running, and uh, find out how to kill wasps. Hear about Whitney's Hawaiian vacation, uh, which really changed her as a person, I'm going to be honest. And uh, the jury's out on whether or not Jim's I'm not okay loving with it. it. Not loving it. <laughs> not loving He's it. He's got choice words. You've got all these opinions now? <laughs> just How hmm. dare you, woman? <laughs> Woman. <laughs> Became a woman and I now mean, I have opinions. <laughs> he didn't say it, but we all knew it. it was there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the energy was there. I didn't deny it. So check it out. Patreon.com slash therapy. Uh, it's a fun time. It's a hoot nanny. We'd love to have you to come join us. <laughs> Great questions for today's show. And this first topic we haven't had in a while having to do with adoption. Uh, this question's titled Family Confusion After Adoption from Titwell. Good evening, pod therapy crew. I have to first let y'all know that I am a huge fan of the show. Absolutely love what y'all do. Y'all. Y'all. You can fix that. You can change that. The y'alls? Oh, yeah. I'm just <laughs> no, gonna... being a fan of this show. Oh, yeah, that too. The, oh, that'll happen naturally. Yeah, you're better <laughs> than that, too. Well. Just listen to more of it. <laughs> yeah, just go to the Patreon. That'll end it. And it has actually inspired me in being my most authentic self as a therapist. Oh, cool. It's a colleague. That's great. I work in substance uh, use, and it is rewarding for sure, but I was so afraid of being direct and cut in front of clients, but y'all have really brought that confidence to me. So first, thank you. Did y'all? Did y'all? Well, great. We've made an you impact. Welcome. Yeah. Did y'all cuss in front of a client? That's a good question. Like oh, in, in rehabs for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I think yeah, you yeah. lose street credit. Yeah, yeah. you absolutely lose street credit. <laughs> I didn't think about it until oh, just yeah. now. I was like, yeah, oh, no, okay. in a rehab, no, no, no. <laughs> They'll be like, what's this stuck up, bitch? If you're not, yeah, you got to throw something out there. What about in private practice? Do you? Yeah, I do. I, I read the person. Yes, yeah. if they drop if, if they one, drop one mm-hmm. especially if they say something and then they apologize and they're like, oh, sorry. And yes. then I usually give them a quick like blurb about like, hey, no, like, you know, words are paint. Just paint your picture, man, whatever. Yeah. And then I will eventually try to throw in just something. A little, little just so they realize like you're among friends. Yeah. So My go to is like, oh, I, it's we're adults. Adult right. language is fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. called adult language. Yeah. Usually, the if it's like the first three sessions and they say something, they'll apologize. But if it's made right. it past that, they're like, Meh. they know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I try. I was but then sometimes I'll throw it out there, and then I'll notice like they might cringe or something, and I realize like, okay, that's like, because that's you the keep boundary. using the term cunt wallet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And out of context, because yeah. it's really hard to find the context. <laughs> Real I random. just keep throwing it out there, hoping I get a hit <laughs> <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Man, that can of SpaghettiOs was a real cunt wallet. <laughs> Is, did I get it? Did, is that, is that, oh, I, I saw, am I that's getting closer? The closest that you've been the best yet. one. I've got yeah. <laughs> All right, restart the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no more. All right, back to the letter. Uh, now past that sappy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. As a therapist, I feel stuck, personally. My older sister, two-year difference, and her husband, together for six years, have gone through the exhausting process of adopting a beautiful little girl, two years old, from Korea. I'm thrilled to be an aunt, as are uh, my parents to be grandparents, because I'm definitely not having kids. Through the three-year That's process... very exciting. Yeah, it is. That, that is... It's a like big mind boggling, boggle, boggle, boggling, foment. That's it. Boggling, yeah. 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 boggling, 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 boggling. boggling. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Poor Jacob today. He's had a hard I time. I can't talk. I can't think of words. Yeah. But that is, is that's like very that's amazingly exciting. That's exciting. That yeah, is that's super what a journey. Boggy, yeah. bo- man, boggy, boogly, 
Boogaloo. Boggle. Boogaloo. Boggle yeah. Ling Lee. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to say. Mind, mind boggling, boggling Lee. Honestly, Ling Lee is say a tough cool. suffix. What? Lee. Say cool. Cool. Say whip. Whip. <laughs> now cool whip. Cool, cool whip. whip. Cool whip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Through I don't want to do a bit. You got it. <laughs> Through the three-year process and traveling and distance, my sister wow. and brother-in-law have had a rocky relationship. To be honest, it was rocky before that. My sister is often mean and has little patience for him, but that has been the entire relationship. He is everything she is not. He's patient, kind, selfless, etc. But they just seem to work, and I love my brother-in-law. Fast forward to make a long story shorter, they successfully adopted and brought her to America, which of course has its own struggles. Trauma of adoption and relocating, not speaking English, not speaking in general... New parent stress, sleep deprivation, the typical postpartum depression that mothers can often experience. We celebrated the girl's two-year birthday over this past weekend with immediate family and my brother-in-law's immediate family, too. And it was great. I love being an aunt. I'm going to pit stop here. I like to say the word aunt. I was just, I keep looking at Nick. I'm like, what? I say the word aunt. But then I feel like it's going to be one of those ones that I say, and then you all shit on me, and I'm really self-conscious. No, it's aunt. Are we all okay with aunt? Yeah. We're all good with this? Nobody says aunt? No. I thought that maybe Jacob would. I looked up, I was like, no. You don't say, like, auntie? Yeah. The three of us were all looking at each other, like, are we cool with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, The family member and the insect. Or no, pronounce the same. I, like yeah, I was pretending that. to be something I'm not for social <laughs> approval. No, be genuinely you. Thanks, buddy. You know what? I mean, in this well, case, I mean, it's it's good for the show. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> gives us gives us ammunition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess whatever's good for the show. Yeah. However, after the party, we left, and I'm texting my sister, which she decides to drop. Oh, when she decide, decides to drop, that her and my brother-in-law aren't together anymore, and she is dating a guy from work. She's a night ICU nurse, so she definitely has her own trauma potential, trauma bond with this guy. Let's call him Todd. I knew it was a Todd. It's always a Todd. (laughs) It seems Todd. Todd. It's always sweeping in. (laughs) It seems quite obvious to me that they had something going on while my brother-in-law traveled by himself to Korea. She tells me it was mutual and that he knew about Todd and he was okay with it. Of course, I don't know if that's true. My brother-in-law is an amazing guy, and he hardly ever gets angry, let alone upset. But this is a tough situation. It's heartbreaking because it comes with... I'm skeptical of the phrase, okay with it. Yeah. (laughs) Okay with it is probably doing some work there. Knew about it. Maybe. Mm, Maybe. (laughs) Okay with it. I bet that's a word word you want. He was adopting your new daughter in Korea. (laughs) Yeah. Probably not psyched. It's heartbreaking because it comes with so many additional questions of what if the adoption agency finds out about their separation? What impact does this place on my niece? What happens to their house, their dogs, etc.? Some insight into this is that my brother-in-law is super wealthy and has provided any and everything my sister has wanted. Dream house, pets, vacations, and even purchased a huge ranch for our family to use whenever. Do they say where they live? Uh, they said? No. Sounds like Texas. Okay. <laughs> I'm, ranch at least I'm like a like ranch. Texas. She says, y'all. Nah, I could be anywhere. Anyway, yeah. here are my questions. Number one, I need an objective perspective because I feel like I'm constantly battling in my head between I want her to be happy and she is making a huge mistake. So how can I look at this different? Or is this the typical therapist answer of you can feel both? Number two. I asked her about her friendship with Todd when we were alone a month before they traveled to Korea to pick her up. And I feel like she lied to me, to my face. And we're really close, or so I thought. Feeling this and making this assumption, am I making this about me? Or should I just ask her up front, hey, why did you lie to me about that when I asked? Number three, I'm heartbroken for my brother-in-law. I want to make sure he knows we will always be part of his family, especially since this is my niece's dad. Is this something I should approach him on, send him a text, email, letter, or just leave it and pretend I don't know? This is still under wraps due to the whole adoption thing. I have a lot of anxiety and heartbreak surrounding this because of all the what-ifs that play a role, and I honestly just need some kind of reassurance or comfort of any kind of, or even humor that y'all could add. I have a dark sense of humor, by the way, so go nuts. Thanks in advance. Of course, depending on how you answer this question, LOL, titwell. <laughs> Damn. I mean, I'll be the first to say it. 
I think your issues might even be worse than my not being able to say words right today. Mm, slightly. Wow. Yeah, I mean, That's slightly. It's up there. That's it's, huge. It's, it's up there. It's a very That's emotional huge. thing either way. Yeah. Yeah. Give, give some thought to that, Jacob. That's I don't know. You may, may regret that You're later. right. You're right. I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Damn. so first thing that kind of popped into my head is just kind of your role as a therapist because I think as a therapist, if I'm in this situation, I can appreciate the temptation that you would have to become the driver of this vehicle as opposed to a passenger, Mm. you know, and like wanting to kind of get in and kind of mingle and kind of figure out, okay, what's going wrong and how can I salvage this relationship? How can I jump in and do this here? And I think the right approach to be, to, to do would just, to take would just be to kind of sit back and let other people work through their own shit. Yeah. I'd stay the <clears throat> fuck out of that. Yeah. I feel like if you're one. I thought about not saying fuck there, but decided I'd already said cunt wallet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a weird one to draw. Yeah. 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 Keep it Indulge. appropriate, Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> this is an R rated podcast. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, That's man. the one he beeps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're acting like a real peeping cunt wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent use of the sensor, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happy with that. So, Jacob, you're on team. Don't get involved. Yeah. Give this one some space. I mean, well, I, I think the easier question to answer is what to do about the relationship with the brother-in-law. I was I think. just okay. going to comment. Yeah, let's go, let's go. start with that one yeah, first. Go. Well, yeah, I was thinking, can you just ask your sister, like, hey, you've told me this. I still really love my brother-in-law, your ex, and I want to talk to him and tell him that it's okay. Are you okay with that? I mean. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't right. ask her. I'd I'd let her know. Oh, tell her? I'd, give her the, I'd just give her the heads up. Be like, hey, uh. Just so you know, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to reach out to what, what, what was the brother-in-law's name? We just called him brother-in-law. 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 I'm, I'm gonna reach out to. We can call him Bill. Bill. I'm gonna reach out to Bill. Yeah, and uh, and and just let him know. And uh, and I think you can you can seed it in. Uh, you know, you're my sister, and I love you, and yeah. and I support you, and I support your decisions and everything. But and, and just say what you just said to us. You know, you, I don't want to lose the ranch yeah. access. <laughs> Honestly, that's I mean, I'm glad you brought it up because I mean that's a big I deal. Mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was gonna go a different ranch. direction, but that's Whitney's you know? that's Whitney's my friend. Homeboy she comes said with dark a time sense of humor. You know, uh, Hawaiian Whitney has a whole different set of uh, She's really changed. The Hawaiian princesses and Hawaii. the chat. She's really changed. <laughs> now, I would just Whitney. say to her that um, you know, he is he's part of the family and now that there is now he's the, the father of my niece. Yeah. And uh so I'm going to continue interacting with him uh, in that in that way. So I'm going to I'm just going to reach out to him and uh, you know just a, a friendly uh, a friendly olive branch. Yeah. yeah. So this is interesting because I would take a different approach. Great. Oh, what's yours? Okay, my approach would be to do nothing until it's out in the public and everybody knows about it, and then I would reach out to the brother. That might uh, that might be fair. Yeah, because then because the other thing too, and my reasoning behind that was if if they're not in the middle of this adoption thing, then I would say yeah. Then I think go ahead and just share that you hey she told me about this and you, here's my thoughts, but I would just worry about upsetting the the boat here rocking the boat with the adoption right. because like it sounds like that's not finished finalized maybe and so if there's a separation yeah and a potential divorce does that what does that do with the adoption i think process? i'm leaning in your direction because i i don't want the the writer um titwell to to get sucked into the vortex of potential conflict too mm-hmm. because like if you're breaking up with your significant other and then i message your significant other and go hey i just want you to know I care about you. We're family forever. Um, you know, I respect you. Mm-hmm. I I may have meant to be a neutral party in all this, but I that what if Bill replies to you and seeks comfort? You're a therapist in this family. What if he says, "Hey, thanks so much for reaching out. It really means a lot. I'm that's, completely that's sidelined yeah. by Todd. I didn't approve of this. She's telling people that I did. Um, I'm really worried about you know my daughter and just it's and now it's like oh shit." I opened up that whole box, and now I've I've now become a commiserator here. I am now a party, right. and my sister is probably gonna be like, "Dude, what the fuck?" Like at well, some point, even yeah, I mean, or it could go the other way too. It's like, "What the fuck?" She told you about this, That's what right? I right. You know, and so there's it's just who a else lot knows? Of, yeah, oh, I'm so humiliated. This could go wrong, <laughs> right? It's I just feel. not worth well, getting involved. Yeah, oh, no. I still I feel like it just depends on the writer. So if they're listening, Titwell. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it depends on what type of person you are. I mean, 
maybe that is more of a female perspective that we have feelings about things and not trying to gender stereotype. But I know from my perspective, if I were there, <clears throat> it would be tempting to reach out because you, you've talked about how much you love your niece and how much you love your brother-in-law. That is your relationship that you have a right to deal with however you like. <clears throat> and I mentioned asking the sister because it sounds like you guys are close, which will address those other questions or comments as well in a minute. But um, you were close with her. So if she's confided in you that info, I feel like asking her will give her an opportunity to say this will really screw mm -hmm. up everything if you say something and then you can decide. OK, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, point. that's what I figured, because if you ask her and she's like, no, that's fine. I've told him that I've talked to you or whatever. That's I don't true. know. It could be a good move just to check. Yeah, just to check in. It might, it might yeah. just be like a, uh, you know, check the lay of the land yeah. Yeah. And, and use your best judgment on yeah. that. I don't go straight to Bill, though. Yeah. I, I think, think you might be right about that. Probably going to be. But the potential for harm outweighs the potential for good. And you can still get to that good. Yeah. yeah. By yeah. just taking the detour. There's no, yeah, there's no time limit on good. Yeah. I think you can always, it's not going to expire, right? Yeah. So you can. He'll if, be reachable later. Right. Yeah. And you know that right now he's tender or yeah. he's going through something. Now's yeah. not the time he most needs you to tell him, hey, I'm a resource for your daughter. Please consider me family. But I think, to this, go ahead. I, don't I was going to say, that can be kind of hard. To, uh, I don't know. I'm wondering, like, friends of mine who've gone through divorce and then being friends with their ex, like, afterwards, there is a weird time period where you're like, oh, did I miss the window of, like, reaching oh, out? That's you know a what great I mean? Point. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you kind <laughs> of, because there's the, what I like to call, I call it the divorce draft. Oh, right. This. Who gets drafted by what party? You know, it's like, and then so you get a divorce, and it's like, okay, well, I call these people here, mm -hmm. and then yeah. now it's your turn to pick. Mm -hmm. You know, and so yeah, you do kind of go through that experience. So that is a good point. Maybe had, it wouldn't be a bad idea. We had friends recently get divorced, and uh, like we were friends with them before they got married. We were mm -hmm. friends with them before they started dating. Wow. And, before they were born. It, you introduced born. them. <laughs> no, we didn't introduce oh, okay. them. okay. But uh, we, we were friends with them before they started dating. And, uh, and then they've, they've recently got divorced this year. And uh, one of them, not both of them, but one of them, we had to be like, hey, we're both we're friends with both of you. Because mm -hmm. like, she yeah. kind of said something Straight about up. like, oh, you're, like, you're, you're hanging out with, with my ex and everything. And we're like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we're going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're we going to hang out with you. We love both of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you kind of have to find a room to say that. And luckily, they reached out to you. But I feel like a lot of times it kind of fades into the abyss. Right. And if you miss that window of, hey, what's going on? Right. It can be kind of weird yeah. to reach out then later. Well, and everybody's know. different too, as far yeah. as like going through that divorce. Because like, I mean, perfect example. <laughs> you were around. Whitney was around when I was going through my divorce. Yeah. Whitney knows my ex. You know, and. Yeah. Like, I've <laughs> we're best friends. Whitney is, is your ex. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, that would have been perfect. <laughs> the big oh reveal. We finally got yeah. to it. <laughs> that would have the season eight reveal. Oh, there it As is. you were describing her, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I'm I'm not the type of person that like had you ever said like, oh, hey, I'm hanging out with. Mm -mm. So and so, and I did hang out with yeah. her. Yeah, and I wouldn't after. have cared mm -hmm. at all. Like it wouldn't yeah. have bothered me one bit. You yeah. know, but there are people who. If would I started be... hanging out with her now, would you? Would you care? No, I think it'd be funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. I'd... Yeah, I have some things to tell you. Y'all would not. Okay. Get, <laughs> I was like, y'all would not get along. <laughs> like, yeah. well, save that shit yeah. for Patreon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right. You know, the first round's definitely on me. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, top shelf, whatever yeah. you want, buddy. Just I want you to just help yourself. But I mean, like some people, like that would really okay. So mm -hmm. another example, like some friends of mine got went through a divorce, mm -hmm. and so I reached out to both of them when yeah. I found out, and you know, and so I was like, hey, you know, I offered my support. I said, you know, obviously I've been there myself. If you ever want to talk, whatever. And both of them were very nice to me until mm. um, one of them accused me of giving information to the other party. <sighs> That's tricky. Yeah. Oh my and, gosh. and I hadn't done it. No. Like, but at that point, it's like, okay, well, they this is. know you all. Like, right. What? Like, <laughs> and so at this point, it's like, okay, well, this is damaged. Yeah. And, and there was no salvaging that relationship. It was right. over. So. Like, I don't know, shit happens like that, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. But it's this speaks tricky. to how, you yeah. know, it can be very tricky. And I think yeah. for Titwell, that that says, hey, you know, proceed with caution. Your instincts might be right that this could blow sideways. Now, the numbers one and two, with number two being, does, how do we feel about confronting the sister and saying like, hey, you know, why didn't you tell me the truth about Todd? I, my first read on that is like, look, Titwell, 
that's her truth. And like, if she doesn't want to confide in you about an affair she's having that maybe she hasn't even mentally defined yet or isn't sure of, Mm -hmm. she has permission to not. And even if you come to her be like, but I asked you about it. Yeah. You can also ask me what my social is. I don't have to tell you Mm -hmm. Jack. And if I don't feel good about the question and I don't want to confront you about not asking it, I'm just going to demur. I'm going to end that topic as fast as I can and be like, nothing, he's a friend. And also, yeah, I, I second that. And I will also say that I don't think that that means that the relationship's less valuable I agree with you. than yeah. you think it is. Yeah. I think that relationship, I think you're just as close as you yeah. would be otherwise. I think it's just, truth is one of those things where it's not just about honesty, but it's about timing. Right. You know, because sometimes um, honesty can be painful and hurtful and right. mean, you know, so you kind of have to, fi- it, it, there's a timing element al- yeah. along with that. So I'd, I wouldn't say that, you know, she's any less close to you. If that's something that you can let go, I'd let that one let go. Let that one yeah. go. I was going to say uh, from being in like a predicament of similar stature, um, sometimes you don't tell people things because you don't want to put them in a difficult good spot. Point. Like sure. yeah, she good doesn't want to put you in a spot. You care about this brother-in-law. Like well, now yeah, you're you going to know. You clearly like or... her husband. Yeah, that's you know? what I mean. Like, yeah. You're gushing in this letter <laughs> yeah. about what a wonderful guy he is. I'm Why... sure she knew that you felt deeply for him. Yeah. And she's probably thinking like, you're look, I don't need position? your baggage. Mm-hmm. Like I'm navigating adopting a daughter, breaking up with my husband and falling in love with my coworker. I don't need to deal with you right now. Yeah. And I don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point because there was that old uh, you know, kind of a hypothetical question, like imagine your best friend, like if they came to you and said that they killed somebody and they need help hiding the body, would you help them or would you turn them in? Right. Do you want to use and- my regular body hiding spot or do you <laughs> want to do a different spot? <laughs> yeah. I can't help you. I'm, I'm, not a new spot. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get a whole new spot. Yeah, you Those get your own spot. will eat up a body. But like, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought about that one time like years ago. Swamp. And like the, the friend that I had Louisiana. in mind. <laughs> The friend that I had in mind, I thought, well, that would never happen because he would never put me in that position. Don't tell me. Yeah. Yeah. And so I like, and I don't think that him covering up, covering that up means that he's not close to me. I think right. it exactly. means the opposite. Could like, be protecting you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They're so more selfish because they're like, I don't want to keep this in. Let yeah. me tell you this yeah. and don't tell anyone. It's yeah. like. Yeah. Oh. So this brings us to Titwell's first question about, look, I need an objective perspective here. I'm battling in my head between I want my sister to be happy and I think she's making a huge mistake. Is there another way to look at this besides getting stuck between those two emotions? It's a tough one. <laughs> that is really As hard. we both look at Oh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, why me? <laughs> um, man, battling that perspective. I would say my gut instinct to that is to say that whether you think she's making a huge mistake or not doesn't really matter because it's her choice and it sounds like she wasn't very nice to him to start with from Mm. your perspective. And um, from your perspective, it's a mistake, but kind of, we mentioned this recently. You don't really know what other people get out of relationships or what they Mm -hmm. don't. Good point. So whatever she's getting out of this relationship with Todd, even if it's that trauma bond you threw out there, um, whatever she's getting out of it, it sounds like she's going to make that choice. And I think even Nick has said this before, you telling someone, hey, I don't think you're making a good choice in this relationship doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They aren't going to listen to you. Right. (laughs) Right. They're Mm going to do whatever they want. I think, yeah, because I kind of look at this situation as like, this is your opportunity to really kind of define what your role is going to be here. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Like, do I... And I would think carefully about that. Yeah. Like, do I cause conflict and say, you're making a huge mistake? Um, do I potentially just, risking your relationship with your sister? Right. Yeah. Or do I just, you know, be supportive? Hey, you're my sister. I love you. I'll be around no matter what. Or do you find a middle ground and say, Hey, I love you. I'm supportive. I do think that, you know, this is something you want to think about. I've got know, questions. And, yeah, c- yeah. I was going to say kinda, questions are okay. If yeah. You feel comfortable that's a good with idea. that. Yeah. 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 Or creating yeah. space to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, t- well, one thing that I would throw in there as well, go back to your training as a substance abuse counselor. Because this is something that we've all had to deal with where you have a patient who's on the road to relapse and and you reach these moments where you want to intervene. You want to talk to them about the trouble in the water that you see down the road for them. And and like you want to try to stop them, but then you have to remember, I can't want your recovery more than you do. Mm -hmm. And I have to give you the dignity of risk. And sometimes the stage of change that you're in, you're not ready to see. 
the things that maybe I can see about this. And maybe mm-hmm. I just need to stand back and allow you to go through this experiment you're running to arrive at your truth. Yeah. If, if your patient has a relapse in them, there's not a hell of a lot you can do about it. Yeah. You can try to talk them through it. You can teach them the coping skills. If they have a use in them and they're going to go use, sometimes all we can do is get out of the way of the door and say, I'll see you when you get back. Mm-hmm. And, and in real life, that's something that we've all experienced when you work in substance abuse counseling. I would encourage you to almost take that same kind of mentality that says, all right, I'm watching you. I'm here for you when you're ready to talk, if you need to talk. I have opinions about whether or not I think this is productive and fruitful. Those are for me. And when you're ready to discuss, I'm here to help you find your truth. It, to add to that and not to discredit anything you just said. I'll take I, it. I, no, because I 100% agree with that. But so what you said- you a different tack than usual. What, <laughs> <laughs> for the first time. What, what you said reminded me of something else, which is that you know when we're talking about defining your role, you got to remember you're a sister, not a therapist. Good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, good point. Everything Jim said, I, I validate 100%. I think he's yeah. right. Also remember, that's not going to be your role to be a therapist. Right. So just, you know, and that, that's hard. Therapize. It's hard to turn that off. <laughs> it is yeah. hard. And there is, I'll, I'll be the bad news guy. On, on the bad news side of this, you could lose one of these two relationships. Yeah. You And you could fuck around and lose both relationships. Yeah. yeah. But you could lose one of these two relationships. Three. Well, it's true with the, with the new niece, niece as well. Oh, I meant Todd. Oh. <laughs> There you know, never the one that she's one. really worried yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, Todd yeah. sounds like a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he must be a stud. Right. He's got a job. <laughs> He's got a great job. Yeah. Works in the ICU. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> He's a lady killer, I hear. <laughs> There's that dark humor you invited us for. That's it. Well, <laughs> you ask, you receive. I mean, you could you could lose either the brother-in-law or your sister or both mm-hmm. if, if things go really sideways. Uh so I mean I, I think you need to kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're as you're dealing with this as you're talking to your sister as you as you speak to your brother-in-law next time as well uh kind of have in your mind at the end of the day I want to make sure that at the very least I salvage this relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. And and we can't tell you which re- re- which relationship that is. Yeah. I would assume it would be your sister. Yeah. But that's just me making assumptions and I don't fucking know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and so it I, wouldn't be wrong if it's not. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I don't have any beef with you if it's not. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Bill sounds like an awesome dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's got a ranch. So, I mean, Honestly, yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. Some, there's some plus sides to, on, on both sides of this here. <laughs> we can go visit. Are you single? <laughs> Are you people. single today? Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I guess that's where we need to I'm go like, with this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was kind of always there. Like, <laughs> Bill sounds available and you sound really into Bill. I didn't want to be the one to say it. I mean, yeah. you could be like an aunt slash stepmom and like, why not? Like, Especially if you're in the South. You're saying it's y'all. It's going to work. So, right? like, aunt okay. mama. <laughs> aunt, <yeah. laughs> I'm going to tell my aunt mama on you. Auntie mama. Uncle, what was that cartoon? Uncle, <laughs> Uncle daddy. Gra- Uncle grandpa. <laughs> Uncle grandpa. God. We're going to take a quick break. You watch break. different cartoons than I do. Yes, you do. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk about long distance friendships. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Jake Schneider, Judy Schneider, Leon Kassab, Carolyn Albert, Sammy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangeman, and Dr. Hot Dog Scoop. If you like to sponsor the show, become a therapy producer at patreon.com slash therapy. So last week, we got uh, an email from uh, medical, uh, oh, it's, this is medical trivia, it's from Almost Dr. Nurse Joey. Oh, cool, right? oh, yeah. That, from the letter that we got last week. So um, she submitted some uh, trivia with that. So here's the question. That was a tough one, by the way. <laughs> What was that, that was one? a tough one. I don't remember what it, I just okay. remember it was really tough. All right. <laughs> Good talk. Good talk. You have to go uh, back and listen. <laughs> way to put him on the spot like that, Jacob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was just trying to get to the trivia. Yeah. <laughs> Question. What is the smallest bone in the human body? Everybody make a joke. Yeah. <laughs> just all go oh, at the same time. First. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're just jealous that I thought of it. <laughs> Smallest bone in the human body, and guess what? It's not multiple choice. I know that the I know uh, for a lot of mammals, if not most mammals, they do have a penis bone. Oh, oh that's true, but yeah. we don't though. A lot of a lot of mammals have penis bones. <laughs> you lot. don't? Oh shit! No, gotta go to the doctor. Just... And check. Oh, God. <laughs> this is the part of the show where we make Jim think he's got health problems. <laughs> <laughs> For, um, Go to the doctor. Penis bone. <laughs> That's like the uh, the Family Guy episode. Symptoms. 
<laughs> average size human penis. What's that? Penis. penis. Oh. <laughs> For years and years in the antebellum South, uh, wealthy landowners would keep a raccoon penis bone on uh, on like a chain around their neck, and they would use it as a toothpick. Oh. oh. Oh, everything okay. about that is wonderful. Fun fact. Uh-huh. I can never you. tell if he's just bullshitting. Or I don't that. care. Who I can, want it to say? be true. <laughs> who can say? I'm fine with. I, I believe a lot of lies. Throw this one on the pile because right, so I yeah. want it. So here's my question: Is how specific do we need to be? With I know this? the answer. By know, the way, I'm you? about to crush. All I know that. the answer, but I don't know the name of the bone. I was going to guess it's one of these little bones. In that's the wrong. Hand. Yeah. Oh, really? You're dumb. That's wrong. You idiot. Is it in the foot? No, that's wrong too. Yeah, you stupid. All right, well, I'm out. I don't know the name of the. Do I know the name of the bone? I, can, I, the location. I think I can get within five letters of it, but I've got... A, I can't. I can approximate it. It's, I can just tell you it's a small bone in your ear. It's in your ear. Yeah, it's the co- the ear cochlear bone. something <laughs> bone. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, your cochlear. Ear. Cochlear is something. in there. Because there's a cochlear, cochlear implant. implant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, I think that's a, a thing in there. Jacob and I are so smart. I yeah. I'm so in sync right now. I just feel like okay, all right. Well, the same guy. Since Whitney and I got it wrong, I'm going to go sit by Jacob. We'll be judges on this one. All right. The answer is the stapes. S-T-A-P-E-S. Cochlear. Stapes. Cochlear. It's a stirrup-shaped bone in the middle ear that is responsible for your ability to oh, here, there probably to see. That I, need I to. think it was going to be taste. Uh, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> to hear. <laughs> to. I'll be damned. <laughs> Small bone oh, in your oh, ear hey. responsible for reproduction. Jim... <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Jim gets bonus points if he knows what a stirrup is. Oh, yeah. It's what the girls use at the OBGYN. That is true. Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to... Stirrup? Gonna, yeah. I was like, there's you other... Don't horse? You don't go saddle? Yeah. What? Oh, my <laughs> Great. God. Great. Moving on. No bonus point. All right. You're up, Jim. Do I get the points? Nope. You lost. Do him. I get the bonus point? Nope. Did I you get the point? You definitely don't get the. Do we get half a point each for at least? Did, getting I, the... did I get the point? We did get half you, point. Did Jim you... not get the point? And I got the point. That's no, no, no. I'll give you each a half a point. I'll you take s- it. You can split the point. Yeah. No bonus points. That's fair. I'm keeping the whole point. <sighs> Shit. Jim doesn't get anything. We need a lawyer. I got a point. Long distance friendships from anonymous high pod therapy. Over the years, I've had many good friends move away, and a majority of them want to maintain our connection and closeness by staying connected through phone calls or sending me messages. I love them, want to maintain connection and closeness, but I also realized that I don't like to spend time with people via the phone or messaging. I like to do activities and make memories, live life with people instead of talking about life with people. Or if I'm going to talk about life with people, I want to be doing something with them while we're doing that. Even if it's just putting a puzzle together or sitting in a coffee shop. If it were just a couple of long distance friendships, I feel like I could handle it. But now it feels like I'm just trying to schedule phone calls all month. I feel like a bad friend if I don't, and I don't want to lose my friendships, but I also can't live like this. I also don't want to have to pick which friends are more important than the others and drop everybody else because it's already narrowed down to people that are very important to me. I've tried decreasing the amount of phone calls, but it all just stresses me out having these phone calls on my to-do list all the time. It feels like a chore now. It's hard for me to build solid, beautiful friendships that I cherish, so letting one go feels like leaving a mansion to go live in a ditch. I'm an introvert and often feel lonely and long to have meaningful friendships, but I don't want to hold on to friendships out of fear or try to control something that I can't. How do I navigate this? Is it inevitable to lose friends? How does one tell someone that they can't show up for them in the way that they want? Is there another way? Does it have to be this way? How do I manage my own sadness of losing a friend? How do you lose a friend gracefully? I know I say lose a friend, but I mean I have a friendship change in mm-hmm. a way that I don't want it to. Thanks for everything, Anonymous. This is a good one. I really relate to this. I, I am not a phone person. Oh, I'm not either. I cannot do yeah. it. Are I mean, any a, guys? I, I mean, I don't think so. That's a hurtful stereotype. It is. It and is ever since I, you got back from Hawaii, <laughs> Now you're filled with sexism. Hawaiian I Whitney. Hawaiian and Whitney. Yes. Sexism and macadamia nuts. I know. Carefree. <laughs> Got it all. You know, <laughs> just tanned and rested. <sighs> you know, Make I don't sick. know very many guys, though, that like I don't like care it. for it. Well, you yeah. know, so like, there's actually a whole theory about, well, I don't know how oh, deep the theory goes, but okay. there there is some theory about this that maybe we even bumped into in grad school. I remember that I bumped into it there, but it was talking about um, 
uh, uh, visual communication cues. And it was talking like it showed all these video clips, but it would show like women in just in the wild talking and like they'll face each other sitting at a coffee table. They'll tend to like, they're both doing therapeutic posture. This is, this was part of a unit where we're learning about, you know, attending skills. Mm. And so they're showing like women just naturally are facing each other, engage with each other. And in male environments, environments built to facilitate male communication, they tend to sit side by side. Hmm. So the bar stools are side by side. Mm -hmm. And then we triangulate upon something and we're very engaged with each other but in an adjacent kind of way yeah. right. where we talk about that thing and maybe we do talk about each other or to each other and there'll be a glancing kind of way mm-hmm. to point at each other. Knees are not usually pointed toward other knees. They're askew in this like, you know, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, yeah. 45 degree angle thing. Mm-hmm. I'll keep explaining it. No, it's just, it's kind of <laughs> like this when I'm doing my hands, like a triangle. So yeah, the they were knees talking about are askew. Men tend to <laughs> triangulate and, and tend to do this adjacent <laughs> thing as part of communication. But anyway, going back to this idea of like how the writer says, I would rather communicate with a friend while doing an activity, something that breaks up the tension that doesn't seem so direct or just talking about life. I Mm. relate to that. That, That's hard for me, too. Yeah. My husband's the same. He's like, I love activity, quality time, visiting. But if it's just sitting and talking, he's got a limit. It's like hour max, like of visiting, Skype call, whatever. And then he's like, I'm done. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Now, therapy is very different, though. Like, you know, you do a therapy phone call or therapy, you know, Zoom call or whatever. That's different for me because obviously I'm working. I'm engaged. Your brain's in like. I mean, my brain is in absolute connection with you to find out what's going on. Well, you're also not just hanging out during that therapy call. You're Like, you have a goal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, There's a project there. So the communication style, I think, very much fits the, the friendship itself. But. This is a thing. I mean, more and more friendships are going virtual, are going distant. You meet more people around the world. We have these robust uh, online communities. And I think a lot of people relate to the writer that it's like, man, how do you foster those and nourish those? I, and what's it like? To I, them I very, very much put, relate to this. Yeah. yeah. I, I relate to this a lot. I've lived all over mm-hmm. the country. I've I've toured. I've I've done all kinds of things. I've lived in I don't even know how many states. Vegas doing is super entertainment transient. Work. Too. There's also that. Like, so you know a lot of friends that, that I've made in transient. Slur. Transient. But I mean, as in the entertainment community, you know, there are people that I've known for 15 years or so living in Vegas that they don't live here anymore. Right. You know, and they they moved here as an entertainer, and now they live in New York or L.A. or somewhere else, and uh, and you know, often still doing the same work, just living somewhere else. Um, but I mean, this is something that I've dealt with for years. I was just laughing uh, this week with another friend of mine. Uh, we were talking about how different friend groups, like I know what friend group someone is in, but, and by friend group, I mean like where I know them from, mm-hmm. by what nickname they refer to me as. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, oh my I've gosh. What this. are your nicknames? Yeah. I mean, different things. I gotta hear uh, these. Can I guess a few? Cunt sure. wallet? <laughs> Cunt, obviously. I mean, he, got, he, he beat me to it. That's... <laughs> You got there first. <laughs> Numero uno. <laughs> uh, there, there is a. Uh, I lived in Charlottesville, Virginia, for a little while, working at a, at a theater there, attached to the University of Virginia. And uh, the first day on the gig, like first company meetings and everything, I went in and I was wearing a pair of camouflage pants. Hmm. And there were two people named Jacob on the on the show, uh. and somebody was like. He's wearing camouflage pants. We'll call him Rambo. Oh, there oh it is. Oh, my gosh. And so there's like 60 people yeah. out there that I wow. worked with for Rambo. about six months. Yeah. And they, and they call me Rambo to this yep. day. That's when I When I interact with any of them, you know, email, text, call, hey, see them in person. <laughs> Rambo, hey, how you doing? That's funny. That's uh, really funny. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I mean, a lot of it is Jacob, especially Jacob Smith. Oh, my god. Very gosh. common name. Yes. <laughs> Very common name. For like yes. the four years, like it, it was multiple years after I was born. At least it wasn't Joseph. Jacob name. was the uh, most <laughs> yeah. popular boy's name. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It had not been on the top 20 list or top 50 list or whatever that published list is that goes out for like 30 years up until I was born oh, the no. year after. Why? And Because like, my, my parents actively, they, they were like, well, we don't want to name him something that everybody's name. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> and then just oopsie. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're not going to name him John or something dumb right. like that. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. Uh, I, so I, I would always get a lot of nicknames because it's just oftentimes that I'm on a gig with somebody else and we have the same first name. Oh, uh, that'll happen. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then calling somebody Smith is just 
Yeah. Yeah. Fu- futile. That. that is an exercise in futility if you need to get one person's attention. Yeah. We will be going around the room getting everybody's nicknames, but I don't want to deviate too uh, far from the question. But I was going to say, so all of those people, and I mean hundreds of people over over the course of my life, if not thousands, that I have that I have friendships with, and they all like that that friendship just kind of floats. Mm-hmm. It's 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 on the back burner. And when I see someone or uh, make contact with someone or they make contact with me or whatever it is, you know, oftentimes that friendship just bubbles right back up. Okay. And we're, we're right back and, and we, we catch up and it's fun to catch up. That is one thing that you don't get to do with friends that you see all the time is you don't get to have that day, moment, dinner, whatever it is of like, man, I haven't seen you in 10 years Tell me everything. Right. Let's catch up. I'm going to tell right. you everything. You tell me everything. Let's do this. And like, and that can be like you talk. Whitney talked about her her husband not being good at having like long, uh, just kind of hangout sessions. Right. When you are doing something like catching up, that's a project now that you're yeah. working on. It right. doesn't feel like oh, doesn't. we're just shooting the shit. We're just chilling. We're just yeah. hanging out. Like no, 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 yeah. no, we're catching up. Right, that's we haven't seen each other in a decade. Right, we've got we we have a task. Yeah, he'll we, go sit difference. at dinner or whatever. And exactly. Do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like we can really do this, and uh, and so I mean, I would say, like yeah, your your friendship is going to change. Yeah, fine. Friendships change. That's okay. Mm. It is it is perfectly reasonable and and expected and normal for your friendships to go through a metamorphosis. Yeah, and that's gonna happen. My advice would be let it happen, mm. and then find ways to keep that contact going. Like I have one friend, very close friend. We don't live in the same state, and uh, but we're very close. Anytime uh, the two of us see anything funny online, like a funny GIF or something like that, oh. we just we just like we probably text each other three times a day. Oh wow! Just with little like a little uh, like one of us will. And it's it's not just like gifts, yeah. but like one of us will send the other one like a funny comic that we saw, and then we'll text back and forth for a couple of minutes about that comic, and that's kind of, that's the end of our conversation that day. Yeah. And and we yeah. have a good laugh about it and then we move on to the rest of our day. But when we do see each other, we get the that joy of of being back together again. Uh I don't know. And and, and we are in an internet age and we're in the the age of Zoom calls and Skype calls and everything else. You can do things like, you know, online games, online board games. That's where I was going to go. Uh you know, yeah. you you have online activities that you can do together, uh especially if you do it as a group. Uh, yeah. you know, I have, I have some friends I'm not into it, but you know, I, I know some people that have, you know, weekly dungeons and dragons games yeah. that they get together online and do. And, uh, and that, you know, they have these games that have been going for years and they, they don't see each other in person very often, but they see each other on zoom yes. every week and they, and they do this. I mean, There's there are ways, ways to, to do make it. it. Yeah. yeah. That way it's not just this one thing. Yeah. I mean, this is exactly what I've been doing with my guys trips. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I was going to mention yeah, making trips. So instead yeah. of a yeah, monthly is, maintenance call though. Yeah, no, do a but, girls trip. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Go to Hawaii. Go to That's Hawaii. Great. To <laughs> no, but like um you know my friends back in Iowa, five of us we were all pretty close. At at one point four of us all lived together. We were roommates, you know. We all played hockey together. Um and then when I moved away, you know, and and then two of them had kids and everybody's kind of doing their own thing now, but yeah, we would stay in contact a little bit, but not much. And then at one point I just decided like, yeah, I kind of miss hanging out with these guys. Mm-hmm. Let's, but, but again, like it's not something that I'm, I'm kind of the same way too, where I'm not going to call. Um, there's a few of them that I will call every once in a while and, you know, we'll just chat for a little bit, but that's it. And we just kind of catch up and then there's nothing else and then it's kind of right. done. But like if there's an activity, something that we're doing, we have a blast. And so I just kind of decided like, I'm going to plan this thing. I'm going to plan this little get together here in Vegas, you know, and, and let's just see if they're interested. And I was kind of nervous about it because I was like, are they going to be like, no, dude, I'm not coming down there or Aww. whatever, you know, but they did. And we had a great time and then we left and then yeah. we kind of stayed in contact emailing back and forth. And then a couple of years later we go to new Orleans, you know, 
that was awesome. A couple of years go by, we go to Austin and it's like, yeah. and I can tell they, they really enjoy it, but none of them are going to take the initiative to actually plan shit out. Sure. That's I'm the right. planning guy. Yeah, they'll yeah. be invited that's, and, that's and they what, will go. That's what my thing is. Yeah. But they, they kind of start getting the itch after a while. They'll they reach out like, to you. Yeah, hey, where like, are we hey, going? What, what's going on? That's what are we doing? What, yeah. What, you know, and so. But that maybe, I mean, if you can do that, if traveling is something that you're into and you've got the the means to be able to, you know, for all of you to go and meet at some new city and experience something new, all of you together, um, that would be a, a fun way to do it. it. It's worked out really well for me. And I think we've, we've actually gotten a lot closer over the years. When I moved away, we hardly talked at all. And then mm. now we, we communicate a lot more often. So. Which I think a lot of us are relating to. Yeah. I mean, Whitney, you seem to keep up with social life, right? You have friends. You, do you have unstructured kind of regular check-ins of just, hey, how are you? Why'd yeah. you call? No reason. Just how yeah. are you? Does that is that natural for you? It is. And honestly, Peter, my husband, he comments on it because I'll sometimes tell him <laughs> I'm like I don't have a, like a hobby or something like that I'll mention that and he's like sometimes I feel like your hobby is kind of keeping up with people like mm. reaching out mm. and I will say to validate those feelings of it feeling like a chore it is exhausting it's a lot yeah. to like reach out do oh, a call yeah. it's emotion like you know even if it's excited emotions you spend an hour or sometimes more depending on the person how long it's been talking to them or doing a, a FaceTime or whatever. And you're like, wow, right. like right. I'm like, <laughs> it yeah. wears yeah, you out. Taxing. So now, I will say on that note, mm -hmm. since you brought that up for me, I don't feel that way at all. Like mm -hmm. it, I don't feel like it's emotionally exhausting or anything mm -hmm. because like we plan a trip, it all happens all at once. Yeah. And then it's gone. Well, do you talk – so those like, people you go on the trip with, how in touch with them are you in between those trips? It's, so it's it's funny because out of the five of them, mm -hmm. um, two of them I contact all the time. Like? Like uh, one of them I'll call and we'll maybe once a month get okay. on the phone. Okay. That's pretty um, often. <laughs> Ben, who's No, we don't a, talk uh, about Ben. See, I knew you were going to do it. I knew no, you were going to bring oh, him up. It gets worse. He's dead to me. It gets worse. Uh, oh, he'll be dead. He'll uh, be even more dead to you in a second no. because he's a Florida Panthers fan. Mm. I know. Yeah. Oh, Ben. <laughs> he just deserves our ben, sympathy. Ben, I thought I couldn't like you any less. <laughs> um, so, and, and then, um, you know, a couple, the other two, you know, like, I will text every once in a while, say, how's it going, whatever. And yeah. that's about, so like my relationship with each of them is a little bit different. Okay. You know, um, but it doesn't feel exhausting to me. It just kind of feels like the right amount. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if I was in town, we'd probably see each other a lot more often, mm -hmm. you know, but, but it's, it feels like when we do like the planned trips, like it's, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's as much of a burden. I don't know if that makes a difference yeah. at all. But so Ryder, maybe you can be the person in your friend group that, is the planner. That's what I was saying. It, sound, it sounds yeah. like you you want something that's going to burn some calories here. And they're it, okay visiting. Yeah. They're like, oh, you want to you want to go on a trip or you want to do the game like the, the yeah, Zoom like calls? The not, yeah, an online. Yeah. You, can, you can organize online stuff. Yeah. You can organize uh, meetups, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it sounds like you want a, a, a job yeah. in this. So perhaps you can be that planner. It says you wouldn't mind doing a puzzle. Can you just work on a puzzle while you chat with them? Are they going to think that's rude? I I, th I don't know that that's what the writer's saying. Oh. I think the writer's saying like it. They want to do something that is engaging with their friend. They want that's the friends what to friendship be doing the puzzle? means to them. Right. Oh, okay. Like talking about life isn't satisfying. Living my life with you okay. is what is. Yeah. And so, like, I do like the idea of of taking full advantage, as you were talking about, Jacob, of, like, virtual games. Mm -hmm. Like, that's one of the neat things about the Discord. And if you haven't explored Discord yet, a lot of people create a personal Discord and then invite their friends to it. Yeah. And, like, there's tons of, like, online games that are in that space that you can just play. Like, in the Pod Therapy Discord, sometimes we all just get in there and play poker. You know, and just then that's like the most talking we'll do. We have a lounge where people could jump in at any time and just chat via mic. Nobody does that. But then we'll we'll host a game. We'll start playing some poker. And now we're hanging out all night and just talking, you know, talking about the game and just and making that conversation. So I really like that idea. I think that that's, you know, very much like in that that place. I mean, I don't relate to any of you, uh, the three in the studio. <laughs> because uh, not all of you who I'm pointing out in the hallway. Um, but yeah, you three I don't relate to. I do not have friends. So like for me, all the people that I've ever met in my life, 
they live in like this quantum superposition of like, it's like Schrodinger's cat. Like they are technically friends, but maybe not friends. I don't know until I call. Should we explore this? With <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, I don't, but I don't feel well, like. When was the last time you initiated anything? Yeah, see, I don't, but I don't want to. Cause like I, but like I care for them. And like, if they were to call me or I were to hear some, see, I probably wouldn't still reach out. I, I don't know. What but like, I consider them a like friend and like, I think we're house. technically friends. And I think we would talk if we saw each other or if we had a reason to connect. We've got some more trivia to do, right? I wouldn't oh provoke. My God. Like, yeah, I wouldn't right. just There's reach a lot. Out. There's a lot here. Like, Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about is CBT gaslighting? You're listening to Pod Therapy. Oh, the three therapists in the room looking very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Today's episode are brought to you by Jake Schneider, Judy Schneider, Leon Kassab, Carolyn Albert, Sammy Scoop, Sarah Smith, Mike Helm, Darren Cunningham, Matt and Lisa Tangerman, and Dr. Hot Dog Scoop. Our next question. Veins carry blood to the heart. True. Arteries <laughs> Winner. carry blood away from the heart. Oh. Both are blood vessels. Oh. If you put all blood vessels in the human body end to end, how long would they be? Here to this. I like that joke. Longer than a raccoon's dick bone. Uh, the joke <laughs> about if you took a hundred people's veins and spread them across the equator, there'd be a lot of dead people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, 1,000 to 1,500 feet. Uh, B, 1,000 to 1,500 miles. C, 60,000 to 100,000 feet. D, 60,000 to 100 miles, or 1,000 to 1,500 kilometers. Oh, kilometers. Oh, I'm just, I'm getting rid of that last one. Yeah, that one's just made up. Yeah, yeah kilometers. Those numbers don't even mean things. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> D, I'm going to say C, go. 600 to 100,000 feet. What was, the, what was D? D a was 60 to 100,000 miles. Yeah, that was a big mile. Oh, that's a lot. It's a like 100,000 <laughs> Well, I already miles. said it. <laughs> You're Crossing committed. The globe. Yep. What was the kilometer one? Uh, 1,000 to 1,500. I'll go with that one. Shit, that was one I was going to take. <laughs> all right, so E, D, and C are all taken? Yep. I guess I'm taking A. The answer is D. Hey! Shit. It's a lot. Two points. A lot, a lot of dead people. Lot one lot and a half people. points. Two points. <laughs> I claimed it. This game sucks. The power of dibs. <laughs> oh, the, the dibs shall be recognized. Yep. <laughs> the gentleman recognizes the dibs. Thank the you. The chair recognizes. Is CBT self gaslighting? <laughs> We're often told. That I'm just going to sit back and giggle during this funny. entire question. <laughs> We're often told that the situation isn't what affects us. Instead, it's our interpretation of the event that gives us grief. I've tried to apply this and cannot figure out how it works because it leads to an unsolvable position for me. For example, if I behave as a shithead and the behavior of those around me become negative, then am I really to believe that I shouldn't take offense to their actions because I'm interpreting them as negative? At what point should we actually look inward and understand that our behaviors cause issues? The way this advice is given tells me that it's never our fault, but the fault of others for not understanding us. Thanks, Anonymous. Okay. I need help clarifying that I can I can clarify it. Thank you. Because this is actually the wording been, is a little weird. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, and there's also kind of a debate going on in our profession a little bit surrounding this. But so uh, basically the writer's saying, if CBT is always saying, hey, question your perspective. I feel angry. Okay. Let's question why you feel angry and how you're interpreting this. Not whether or not you're right. Like whether or not you just should be angry. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's kind of the setting that this question is asking is okay. if everything comes down to your interpretation, isn't that the same that an abuser would do to you and be like, no, I'm not being mean. You're just really sensitive, Whitney. Why are you so sad? You're offended at me. Oh, you think, well, that's your interpret. Gosh, you're such a suspicious person. Why do you see it? Why do you always think I'm cheating? Like, I'm just, you know, exactly. So mm -hmm. the, the problem is, is if this thing's only ever asking you to question your own perspective, isn't that kind of like a self gaslighting? Okay. So my answer to that is I think that is kind of a misinterpretation of CBT. A little bit. 
Yeah. yeah. Because that's not exactly... Yes, it, it is... The three of you sound self- awfully defensive. <laughs> Whoa, that's your interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jacob, Let's talk about why you think that. Nobody's defensive here. <laughs> <laughs> so that, actually, what Jim just did is a good example of how CBT is used inappropriately. Yeah. That's not what it is. As a weapon. That's not what CBT is. <laughs> Weaponized CBT. That's right. <laughs> yes, so Pulse everybody... Stick. Everybody is looking inward. That's what CBT is. So if you are being a shithead and other people's behaviors are then negative towards you, yes, they are probably looking inward towards what does you being a shithead mean to them that right. causes an emotional reaction from their perspective. Right. However, we're completely negating or not even looking at ignoring your perspective, which is why are you being a shithead? Right. So it's not, it's, it's both parties looking at their own perspective, like internally, because that's the only thing you have control over is your own behaviors. So when people would come, you know, a good example of this, this happened all the time in substance use treatment where, (laughs) where they could have, I could be clean and sober. The if everybody else would do what they're supposed to do. Right, right. Okay? Like, oh, I could absolutely, you know, be a nice person. I could absolutely quit using the substance. I could absolutely quit gambling. Yeah. If you would stop being an asshole, right. if my boss would get off my back, yeah, yeah, if yeah, yeah. my neighbor would I'd stop drinking if my wife stuff. wasn't such a bitch. Exactly. Okay, I could exactly. be sober for the rest of my life, but then Nick, she raises exactly. her fucking voice to me and she goes off again about the goddamn carpets, and yeah. you know what? I just leave the house and I get wasted. It's not my fault. Now, <laughs> uh, my perspective as a therapist is going to be like, well, I'm not going to waste my time on any of that. Mm. Okay, so we can spend the next eight hours in my office talking about how everybody else needs to change, right. and at the end of that eight hours... We will be in the exact same position that we are right now. Right. So our only option then is to look inward at what we are doing and our perceptions to try to change some of that. Now, that doesn't mean that your boss is off the hook. Your boss may be a dick. Right. Okay. That doesn't mean that we're excusing his behavior. That just means that there's nothing we can do about that behavior. Right. So we have to, we can only control the thing that is within our hands, you know, right right? inside our little bubble. So that's where we're going to direct our focus. Yeah. There is actually an interesting debate in our profession about this right now. And it's, I've been doing a lot of thinking on this actually, and and kind of been writing out some scripts that I'm, I'm kind of preparing for maybe a future YouTube project to talk a little bit more about some of the inners of our profession. But there is um, a growing uh, group of, of therapists, and this, this movement has mostly been born from the academy. So it doesn't come out of clinical world where we all have this hands-on reality stuff. It, it really has to do with theory and philosophy. But a lot of it is a reaction to um, long-term systemic injustice, right? And so like you start to think about colonialism and like big problems. And so there's this movement that's, that's happening where they're saying, hey, sometimes the CBT stuff is really frustrating because I'm trying to appreciate that we are part of an unjust society and I really want my patient to realize they are the victim of global injustice, systemic injustice, privileged systems. And I want them to appreciate and locate their oppressor and see themselves as a reaction to the oppressor. And of course, they, they get frustrated, those particular therapists, with how they see CBT because they say CBT is gaslighting my patient into dealing with themselves instead of the broken system. When really they like need to become a empowered, problem. right? Mm-hmm. And so instead of teaching them how to live in a broken system, I want them to become empowered and, and kind of rage against that system. And, and there's a whole theory and approach that goes along with that. And, and those particular therapists are quite critical of CPT because they feel like it is a system designed by the oppressor class it's like enabling yes that it is <laughs> it is basically teaching you how to be subdued and accept your realities and so there there is a interesting philosophical debate to be had in that i think yeah. our colleagues should have that discussion um i don't agree with the reductionist mentality that this question and again i'm not against you writer i'm just i'm answering your question I think that, yes, any particular therapy system can be used abusively. Freud's system was used abusively. Anybody that disagreed with Freud, 
had uh, what was it? Uh, resistance. Mm-hmm. They're showing resistance. Mm-hmm. It means you want to have sex even more with your mom. You know, <laughs> and so I was like, geez, you know, you couldn't uh, get out of this. Yeah. It's always the answer. Yeah. And so the like, number one way to tell if somebody wants to have sex with their mom is if they deny it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. First question I ask in therapy before even what's the dob. I'm like, hey, how hot's your mom? Honestly, in your opinion. So like, CBT can be used as a cudgel, as all theories can. And yeah, I mean, in a really irresponsible way, you could you could gaslight somebody and you could question everything about them. But that's not what CBT is trying to do. If you're just appreciating it, it's saying humans develop cognitive distortions. And for some of us, that leads to a dysfunctional, wrong-sized reaction to the world around us. Jim has generalized anxiety disorder. So like when I use CBT, it's me learning to right-size a perceived threat. That's not me gaslighting myself and like lying to myself about there being a threat. It's me right sizing the threat. And when I'm doing CBT with folks, I usually compare it to finding a house spider. If you find a spider in, in your bedroom. Or a wasp. The, or a wasp. God help us all. <laughs> or spiders in a wasp yeah. nest. Anyway, if you find a spider in your bedroom, the only thing worse than finding a spider is. Losing Not the spider. spider. There it is. Like losing losing half a spider. spider. Half a spider in your soup. That's right. <laughs> so in your a spider with a gun. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or eight guns. So, yeah, the only thing worse than finding one is losing one, right? So you keep an eye on that spider. You react to it. A right size reaction is to get a shoe, cross the room, splatter the spider. But if you saw a house spider the size of a Doberman, Okay, a nice 150 Australia, pound. Yeah, talking to you. Big ass. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Such things exist. The correct response for finding one of those in your bedroom is to run out of your room screaming, light the house on fire to save humanity, right? Obviously. But if you did that for a house spider, it'd be a wrong sized reaction. We'd call you crazy. If you do that when you find, you know, an alien invader spider, then we call you a hero. So right sized reactions to the world around you is a very important life skill and something therapy is very interested in. It's not gaslighting to help people right size that reaction, but I will agree CBT, like all theories in the hands of an incompetent therapist is dangerous, which is one of the things that scares me about our culture weaponizing a lot of psychology words lately. Yes. Mm-hmm. A lot of this stuff Narcissism is getting Narcissism and gaslighting are yes. like the two. That and they're all getting put to. into the people's hands that are being used as well, weapons. I, and CBT I get it be because from the surface, surface level, when you think of like gaslighting, so like, okay, if I've got... Um, a person, a client that is in a domestic violence situation, I'm using CBT. I think the public sees that as in like, okay, so... How to um, accept your abuse yeah, how do you and work on why you're and, upset about yeah, it. Yeah, but that's, that's not, not what, what it, it is. is. Yeah. It's, it's, it, we, we do look at what does this relationship mean to me and how, when he treats me this way, how does this, what, how do I perceive yeah, that? If anything, but that doesn't mean that the answer is then I stay the with it. No. no, the answer may be this means this to me right. and therefore I need to get the fuck out. Yeah. The dysfunctional behavior is that you're doing nothing about the abuse. So right. what am I going to ask you? Hey, why do you keep putting up with this shit? Oh, well he slaps me because I provoked him. He, you know, I, I deserved it, Jim. You know, because sometimes I'm really hard to live with. Great. Now we're using CBT to dismantle that cognitive yes. distortion, yeah, right? That's... Because you're shooting, you're personalizing, Shoulds. you're doing all these cognitive distortions that are enabling a dysfunctional pattern. Yeah. CBT is going to dismantle that, not enable that. Yeah. So CBT is not like a flawless theory. So guys, get off her back. God, you're just, you know... <laughs> Let's, let's gaslight the writer. I <laughs> think we should. Now we rise in. Well, I mean, the only thing that I really don't understand about it is why Nick keeps on bringing race into it. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's the weird. Fact, I mean, I appreciate that he's saying N word instead yeah, yeah, of what yeah. he usually yeah, says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cut but, uh, but the, 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 cut yeah. the fact that Nick keeps on talking about having it's to weird. look at the N word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, was, yeah. It, it makes me uncomfortable. Uh, it yeah. makes me very uncomfortable. Is there any yeah. dimmer in here? Yeah. It's <laughs> weird. It's strange. This is an intervention, Nick. Yeah. All right. Well, as we wrap up the show, we just want to remind everybody that you can run down to patreon.com slash therapy. You can get our extended show. This one's an hour extension. It's a lot of fun. You get the show a day early. You get it ad free. You also get dumped into our discord community. If you want to live chat with other listeners every Monday, you get deep dives, interviews, skill shares, research roundups and rants. All for as low as a buck. Well, some of that for as low as a buck, but at least five bucks will catch everything. And uh, again, you can listen to the same podcast app you're using right now. You just get a little code. You drop it into the settings. Bada bing, bada boom. Even Nick can do it. 
it, he, he doesn't, but he, he but he can. can. He can do it. it. <laughs> Patreon.com slash therapy. But we've got some new folks joining us in the Patreon. Woo-hoo. Let's do some roundups here. Who the Therapals be? We got some new Therapals. Thank you, Judy Moody, Chris, and an up. Put- no, wait a minute. You got it. A new Patil. Yeah, but. Dun, 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 dun. You said that one. I did. A new Patil. I said that one last time. Too many, time. Too many syllables. Oh. We got some new Therapods. Want to thank <laughs> Adam Warren, Kyle, and Jim Mills. Oh, Jim, Jim, the first lady of the Discord server. And uh, it is that time of year. Oh, we have a new Thera producer. Dun, dun, sh, dun, Exciting. Dun, sh, dun, dun. Sandra McPancake. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra McWaffle. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I love that Sandra just embraced it. Yep, <laughs> just went did. for it. Hey, it's the first of the month. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It's the first of the month. It's not the get first up, of the month. Get up. Oh. Uh, it is because we didn't read these last time. We're bad at podcasting. Oh, so it's, that's, not, that's not the first of the month. We're just catching up. Yeah. Yeah, wake great. Up, wake up. Wake <laughs> up. Let's gaslight Go, him. Jim. I don't have a yeah. list. Yo, you didn't send me Jack. It, it's at the very end. Scroll down. Keep going. Uh, oh, oh. Theropods. Welcome. No, wait. Thank you. Dan Martin, Newstick, Robert Paulson, Polygon, Colin, Scoopstronaut, Linda Brandmeyer, Corey Owens, Joseph Pangrazio, Brad Kefauver, Christine Phillips, Tracy Replogle, Gavin Bristow, Carrie Terhark, Stacey Westerlin, Scoopy Scoopy Just Jess, Ian Whitefall, Kiwi Fruit Scoop, James K, Chelsea Saracen, Craig Little, Katie Chiwakowski, Don Dor, Jim Hunter, Adam Rabiznik, spelt like it sounds, Oki Scoop, Brooks Lyle, Matthew Nayer, Take It Eevee Podcast. Cast, sustainable transportation for all. Todd Canfield, Felicia Butler, Do- David Sorensen, Shayla Bullock, Scopatron, Lauren Izzo, Stacy Coleman, Adam Pettinuzzo, Matt's Lenegrin, Heather, Scoopiter, Ascending, Ian Soto, Jessica Cyphers, that Josh guy, Dr. Scoop Little, Mama Ninja Scoop, Lee Popsicle, James Dawson, Colson Morrow, Jacob Harrington, Sarah Olo, Grumpy Lake Mead Park Ranger, Sam Buck, Karen McCulloch, Megan Smith, Kate with an I. What weekend? Some nobody. Lila, Big A, do crimes. Kelly Gagner, Nippy, Brian Emra, Drew Helligy, Alec Lancaster, Matthew Johnson, Keeley Flowers, a literal pickle. Matthias Vandebrandt, Hannah Marie, James Hubble, Max the Ginger Scoop, Ked. Ken T- Tins- Tinsley nailed it. <laughs> Chemist Stacy Protect and Scoop. Old T Engie. Anana Nurse. Dun, 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 dun. Smells funny. Andreas Savedra Molina. Cody Charrington. Brady Malachek. Matt Kubik. Chad Chad the Safety Lad. Walker Fluke. Philip Guyton. To Mystery. Almost Doctor Nurse Joy. Thanks for the trivia. Ilya Gribkov. Duffy, the slowly getting their therapist bear, Brogan Hastings, Julius Kappel, Nico, Christopher DeGersey, Kirka Grimm, Irvin Santon, Samantha Santi, Trisha Ortiz, Melissa L. Geisler, Al, Joel McMillan, Kirsten Johnson, Laura B., DJ Seward, Mississippi Hippie, Tiny Home Traveling, Chris and Alyssa, Scott A., Patty Glad, Chris Conway, Fifi, Eli, Heather W., Todd Vroman, Christopher Aguirre, Anthony Camarata, yes, Susie Kathleen, Melvin Cramble, David Williams, Kate Pelles, Freya Lawson, Joe Beth R. Bowers, B.J. Palazzolo, Mark Orellan, Buddy Dobbins, Travis Ryan Christensen, Indecorous Art, Kelly Murphy, Eric Dyer, Emma Kane, and Starchkey. And thank you to our Theradactyls, Pickett, Kristen Robbins, Celeste, Quintero, Lovely Spark, Dank Butta, <laughs> Cy Shonigan, Sandra McWaffle, Chris, Robert no, Ward. No, McWaffle's a producer now. Oh, well, this was old. <laughs> she was uh, she was this last week. Uh, Chris, Robert Ward, Ryan Stewart, Andrew Langmead, Andrea Anderson, Lindsay Bashara, Fred Bashara Jr., Frozen Cusser, Richard Bruins, Ice Blue Scoop, Lori Eltsroth, and Scott Brady, and Brian Lehman. Love them all. And we want to thank our bosses, the mysterious and shrouded Illuminati members of the fan club. The Thera Producers, first of all, thank you, Dirty B, our Thera partner, and those producers, Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie, Jr. Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Dawn, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Doctor, and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Cindy Ash, Mason Miller, Richard Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley Slap in Your Face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, University Jeff, Mike Helm, Myra, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, 
Team Monaco, Thunder, Cougar, Falcon, Scoop, Matt and Lisa Tangeman, hey Oscar Swanros, a sunny boy, and Slurpy Kaye, motherfucker, and of course, Sandra McWaffle. And if you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited. And why wouldn't you? And enjoy our spontaneous side projects, go to patreon.com slash therapy. And thank you for submitting or for listening, supporting, and all of that. Man. <laughs> You guys are good at this. Mental health. You're a real cunt wallet. <laughs> That's all the time that we got for this week's session. Want to thank our landlords, Matt Mattingly's Ice Cream Social Podcast. And thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today. We really appreciate it. Remember, pod therapy isn't something to keep all to yourself. Share this episode with the world. Tag us on the socials when you do. It's at pod therapy guys on Instagram and Twitter slash pod therapy on Facebook. And don't forget the goodies at patreon.com slash therapy. That's all the time. We, no, nope, you're an too. idiot. Man. Do, Do you, you want to submit a question to the show? <laughs> Ask anonymously. Podtherapy.net or email us to podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangent. I'm Jim. I'm Whitney. I'm Whitney, too. Aloha. I'm better than you. Yo. I fly classy airplanes. That Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointment next week. I carry my own bags. <laughs> all right. Uh, we do have one more trivia. Oh, oh hit us. And then we're going to head to the bar and discuss this uh, entrance music. Nope. Yes, that's ah. what I wanted to ask. We need to vote on uh, the... On the, the I can't uh, go to the bar, yes. but I'm happy to change the on music. On the Discord. Okay. Okay. Go to the bar. Bonus question. What is the name of the third type of blood vessel? Oh. Oh, it's...